breaking coronavirus news and updates with Dr. Anu, next. When you love who you are and stay true to yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you or visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life. We're about turning positive into A plus, and we have everyone's favorite, Dr. Anu, back with us. Time is precious with her because she's on the front lines. Dr. Anu, what's the latest? Uh, there's a few things, but I think that the one major headline that came out today, and I know I had done a video a few days ago, but I wanted to update the viewers on this, was talking about pets. So out of New York, they just found out, and uh, the vets actually tested um, a few different animals in their zoo because of respiratory symptoms, and they found five tigers, three lions, and I think two house pets, are, which are cats to have been COVID-19 positive. So what we know from this um, illness or this uh, virus is that it's zoonotic, meaning it's transmissible between animals and humans. Um, but as far as COVID-19 in particular, uh, a lot more studies need to be done in regards to pets in particular and animals. What we have found out based on our limited data though is that transferring of COVID-19 from your pets to humans is quite low or there may be a lower risk, but it can be transmitted from humans to pets. So my advice, at least for the time being until we get more information regarding this, is just to isolate your pets and also, if you are sick, make sure that your pets are not right with you so that we are protecting our pets and the rest of the family as well. So take the same measures that you would for the rest of the family members or people that are in your apartment, house, wherever you live, residential area, take it and use the same um, ideas and ideology for your pets as well. I imagine that's going to make it sort of quite stressful on the pets who have suddenly gotten used to having us all around, suddenly yeah. to maybe have to be put in the laundry room or, or somewhere outside. So, But we don't know what the effects are on the animals yet, right? No, I think that what we're finding out is uh, clearly you can see they're all cats. Um, and interestingly enough, we just had a conversation between the doctors in my office dogs are immunized and there's they're actually vaccinated for coronaviruses. There was just one case, I think, in Hong Kong where a dog was found to be weakly positive. So we don't know if they're not, dogs are actually immunized because of the vaccines that they're getting or is it something that they're genetically, their makeup is protecting them against coronaviruses in general, we don't know. So I think because of this information, we're gonna start looking into it further. And we should point out, coronaviruses run a spectrum of viruses, not just COVID-19, right? Because that would lead to people going, oh, if they're immunizing dogs against this thing, why aren't I getting a shot against it? No, and there's, again, there's different strains of coronaviruses that will affect animals that don't necessarily infect humans and vice versa. So again, I wanted to state that coronaviruses are a family, just like influenza is a family and there's different types. So protect our pets, as hard as that might be. Uh, yeah. Hey, Anu, we've got some viewer questions have come in for us. So are you ready to answer a couple of questions from people who have sent stuff in? Of course I am, let's go for All it. All right, first up, we've got Chris. Hey Chris, what's up, what's your question? So I'm undetectable. Um, but I'm still worried about getting sick, um, uh, depressed, anxiety, fear. Um, how do I, what should I do? Like, do I self-isolate? Um, how do I get over this? Yeah, I knew this is interesting because again, the depression side of things and you know, I, I'll be honest, this is week, whatever I'm starting to feel it. I'm someone who suffers from depression also, and I'm normally pretty good and bubbly. This week has been wobbly for me, and the self-isolating is really hard. Well, number one, I would like to commend Chris on being undetectable. Um, and so in, in that sense, I don't want you, Chris, to worry about being more at risk compared to another individual uh, because you are well protected. You do have enough CD4 cells to build an immune response. And then when it comes to anxiety, fear, depression, I just want to state this, you are not alone. 
even me, you know, and this is uh, like we all deal with different emotions during this time. This is a hard time for even me as a person. And what do I do? We vent to each other. We're going to use this is where we need to come together and use our resources that are around us, whether that be friends, whether that be family, whether that be your physician, whether that be your therapist or psychiatrist, finding ways to actually talk about it and not only just talk about it. Yes, there's venting and also talking about your feelings, but I think more importantly is finding a way to deal with it. Whatever works for you. We all deal with our emotions in a in a different manner, right? Some some people when they're sad, they want to be separated and isolated away. Some people when they're sad, they want to be next to someone, be held, be hugged, etc. So that's the more important I would say objective is find a way to cope with it in a safe manner, of course. Yeah, I to your point. So most importantly, you're not alone. There's millions of us, myself included, yeah. feeling like that at the moment. But acknowledging it and and doing something about it, that's the key. Uh, talking to someone. All right, this time and it's... And I, I, uh, I also yeah. want to say don't muffle, don't muffle your emotions. So if you're feeling sad or feared or depressed and you want to cry, let it out. Don't yeah. build it inside just because you feel like, oh, that's weak. No, that's not a sign of weakness. That's just you being human. And if you need to scream, find a pillow and scream into it. Guess what? It's actually therapeutic. If you have so much frustration, you don't know what to deal, how to deal with it. If that's turning on a song and dancing or literally standing in place and running or, like I said, screaming into a pillow, do it. You know, let yeah. them out. Let those emotions out. I shall grab a pillow right after this interview is finished. <laughs> um, Amy, you've got a question for Dr. Anu. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Five Leiden, and I've heard that there are problems with blood clotting with COVID-19. Should I be concerned uh, with my blood clotting factor? Amy, you just asked me a very difficult question because this is, we've now entered a area where there's a lot of unknowns. And right now, based on all the patients that we have had um, in New York, Italy, Wuhan, China, uh, even Japan, South Korea, other places, there is a theory that's going around saying that COVID-19 does induce clotting. Um, and that is leading to people to have clots in their legs, clots in their spleen. Um, there's a theory that it could be showering tiny, tiny clots in your lungs, and that's what's causing people to go into lung failure, or what we call ARDS. So to be completely honest with you, we really don't know at this point. And I think that a lot of hospitals are trying to figure this out. Um, we're doing a lot of studies. So I would say to the viewers, especially you, Amy, just keep a lookout on the news as we're trying to find more information and me specifically, I will try and update all of you as well as soon as I hear more information regarding this. Um, and that's, that's the thing about this virus. It's a novel coronavirus. No one knows much about this and we're trying to figure this out as unfortunately more cases arise and we're dealing with this in the hospitals. So I'm sorry, it's a great question but it's a difficult one. Difficult one. So many unknowns with this whole thing. Uh, we now have Ben, who has a question. Ben, what's your question? Hi there. So what's the difference between an antibody test and a COVID-19 test? And how do I know which one I need to take? Great question. So a COVID-19 test, which is usually a PCR, but there's also point of care testing or rapid testing that's out there. That is used to test if you actually have the virus and are being are infective so if you're currently going through the symptoms and currently having the virus affecting your own body okay antibody tests are used to see if you've built immunity to the virus so you're past the symptomatic phase you're past you know the virus being active within your body and you're trying to see whether you've built your protection to the virus itself. So it's after that whole phase. The reason for antibody testing and why we're doing it is because of multiple reasons. Number one, we can look at studies and look at antibody testing to see 
where has this virus hit? How many people have been immune to it? How long does it take for a person to build antibodies? How long are the antibodies present within uh, within a person after they've been infected with COVID-19. So this information is used to number one, develop an effective vaccine, but it is also being used to track where this virus has been, but also identify future hotspots. So if there's an area where most people are not, are found to not be immune to it, you know that when this vaccine is, uh, when a vaccine has been um, brought about or has been made, you want to, you want people in that community that hasn't been uh, immunized as much to be uh, vaccinated first, or it could still be a risk, an area of risk for being hit in the future. And lastly is we've talked about convalescent plasma donation. So this is where you take a person's antibodies that they've already um, built up and you take that from that person and then transfuse it into a person that has an active infection that was diagnosed with COVID-19 testing, active infection, transfuse it in them in hopes of neutralizing the virus and kickstarting their own immune system. Anu, I have a question. Um, there seems to be, you can buy online now for about $100, these sort of rapid COVID-19 slash antibody tests. They're not FDA approved, but I've got friends who've bought them. How reliable are those? Should we be buying those even if they're not FDA approved? What's your take on that? I think it's $129 and my take on it is we still don't know. And this is the reason why certain centers, um, for example, do not use point of care rapid testing because when it comes to a test, we really need to look at things like sensitivity, specificity, what that means in the in the um, holistically speaking is how yeah, reliable English, is please. it? English, please. English, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> how reliable is it? You know, how, how many out of all the tests that we're doing, how many false positives are there? How many false negatives are there? So we really need to look at all of this. And just because it's rolled out doesn't mean that it's effective or it's reliable. And I think we're, we'll only know that after people, yes, and it's also not cheap, but we'll only know how reliable it is after a lot of people take it and we do studies on it. Right. Okay. Um, we've got time for one more question. This one's come in from uh, via email. The question is, I've seen that some people who previously tested positive and then negative are testing positive again. Should I be worried about getting reinfected? I've heard this question come up time and time again, Anu. What's the latest on this? So I think from what we've heard as far as stories wise, I think we, this needs to be looked into further because is it a case of reactivation where the virus, yes, was dormant and then it got reactivated again, which can be seen in uh, other viruses like chicken pox or herpes simplex, right? Cold sores that get reactivated, for example. Or is it that this person was reinfected with a different strain of COVID right, or coronavirus, or third is, was that sample that was taken where the patient was negative was not a good sample, and that's the reason why it was negative, and then the subsequent time that this patient got tested, it was a great sample, and it was positive, and this patient's actually remained positive all throughout. So there's various factors that it could be, and the answer is I don't know. So many unknowns as we all navigate our way through this pandemic, but we're so grateful to have you, Dr. Anu, to break it down and, and put it in everyday speak for us. So thank you for taking time out of your busy, busy schedule. We really appreciate it. That's all we've got time for on this Plus Talk on Plus Life. For more information, you can visit our website, pluslifemedia.com. Be sure to follow and like us across all social media platforms. We are at Plus Life Media. Until next time, Take care of yourself, take care of your pets, wash your hands, and stay home.